Okay guys, uh, welcome back to the Games Practice channel. My name is Michelle and we are continuing with Life is Strange, the graphic novel, not sorry, <laughs> the visual novel, chapter 2 of uh, All all Wounds. I'm almost forgetting the name, oh, like, Time Heals All Wounds, so yeah, All Wounds. So let's start chapter 2. Uh, well, the rabbit hole does go deeper, but I guess ain't really that much further than chapter 2 just yet. Have fun pissing around in Chloe's brain. Oh, now we get to experience Chloe's perspective, which is going to be interesting. Hmm, different art style again. Chapter 2, Fritter. B banana fritters? I like eating those. Now, is it the same thing again, but St. Chloe said? The cold had passed, things were warmer that evening. A menacing monstrosity of wind and chaos, delicious but horrible chaos, rampaged before her. Distant enough that she felt out of harm's way, yet close enough to be still pretty goddamn terrifying. The raindrops were like needles against her skin, the wind snapping and biting, clawing at her. Everything had just been clawing, grabbing, swiping. Days and days of this, like the universe itself was trying to shred her from existence. Yeah. The icy fingertips of death brushing against her neck time again, time and again, time and again, and again, and again, and again. And, but she was still standing, watching that tornado slowly pass by. It was like staring death face to face, and Chloe had been ready for it, at peace with it, beside the lighthouse. It had taken the past week with Max back in her life to make her feel this way, make her realize how fucked up her priorities had gotten, make her realize how she really didn't deserve to, be to still be alive. And yet, she was still standing. And death was drifting by, taking Arcadia Bay away like a child, throwing a temper tantrum when it did, was denied its candy. A fucking big ass godlike child. Well, maybe it was more like watching death drive by, a renegade, a renegade, speeding through a red light, flipping Chloe the bird as it passed. She could hear the fuckers shrieking, YOLO BITCH, YOLO <laughs> it spread it, as it sped past, er, sped being metaphorical. Watching that tornado roll on by once by was at once hell raising but not exactly quick. Anyway, either way, Chloe Price was still standing against all odds, against all logic. She felt so warm, warmer than she could remember feeling in a long time, overwhelmed with too many different emotions to keep track of. And the person responsible for this, all of it, was clinging to her for her dear life. Uh, Max's tears won and snot were mixing with the rain, sticking to Chloe's shirt. Max's fingers were tightening, gripping at her leather jacket. Max's breath was erratic, uh, her sobs savvy, tugging at Chloe's insides. Chloe had been tempted, in the heat of the moment, to lighten the mood, make some kind of crack about whirlwind <laughs> of emotions, am I right? Uh, no, no, not a good idea. Chloe, please don't do it. But, uh, no, no, not so much. Poor Max probably wouldn't have been able to handle all that. Oh, Maxine, Maxine, Max. Maxine fucking Caulfield, that crazy, beautiful mystique of nature, saving Chloe's life. What kind of crazy things had Max been through that week? Chloe only... Chloe could only imagine, and nothing she imagined up was particularly pleasant. Goddamn nightmares, she figured. She'd never seen Max so broken apart before. Torn up, all for Chloe's sake, at that. Girl must have been through some dark shit. And thanks to Super Max putting up with this, that with said dark shit, there Chloe was, letting Max's warmth fill her. Watching her hometown get rendered to rubble. And Chloe had never felt more alive. Hmm. Max's raw emotion was drizzy out in the mess of teardrops and raindrops and snot drops. Words she'd just said a minute or two prior repeated themselves in Chloe's head, cutting through all the noise. Don't say that. I won't trade you. Fuck that. No. No way. You're my number one priority. You are all that matters to me. Okay. Max could screw around with time and fucking space and she'd done it for Chloe. She was willing to let this crazy storm tear an entire town apart just to be with Chloe. What the fuck do you say to that? How do you respond? How are you supposed to even feel? Chloe had no freaking idea. What she did know was that somehow she'd been given a second chance at living. Max Caulfield actually cared that much. So fucking much that she was willing to make such a crazy choice like that. Mind blow right there. With Max hug hung a with Max hung across in the storm, Chloe's eyes pulled with tears, her heart raised, her hands shook as she tried to comfort her heartbroken friend, her best friend, her partner in time. The weight of this realization of being loved to such a degree was incomprehensible in the moment. No one was supposed to do things like that for Chloe Price. How was she supposed to go on hating the world, huh? After that, she, and after she could wrap her head around someone caring that much. How could Chloe possibly make up for such a loss? She was not worth it. 
There were no two ways about it. Especially now, after being with Max for the past week. It was extremely clear to Chloe how selfish she'd been. What kind of person she'd been turning into. But Max had just given her a fresh start, a second shot. And yet, she could... She didn't know. Become a fucking saint? Yeah, good luck with that. And no way could it make up for what she... What was been lost right then, right in front of her eyes. What the hell was Chloe going to do? What other choice did she have other than to make the most of this second chance? No, she had to do more than that. She had to at least make sure Max was able to live the kind of life she deserved. A second chance over for them. It wouldn't be enough to tip off, to tip the balance off. Fucking fate, the universe, whatever. But hopefully it would be enough to keep them both afloat. Whew, that was a mouthful. Whoa, flashback. Chloe, Max. The birds are calling out their names in quick succession like that. It was kind of jarring, in a cool way. Well, it's kind of nice to actually hear other people's noises. It's quite positive attitude, like, knowing that they're alive despite the people who died. But Max looks so horrible. They both look like they haven't slept in a while. They both look like they, they, both look like they haven't slept in a while. Max and Chloe. Chloe and Max. Hmm, which order sounded better? Chloe could see herself getting used to the sound of either, but they really needed, like, a team name. I can't believe Chloe is thinking about all this. Not one from when they were kids, they needed a new team name, for, one for this post-traumatic world they were now living in. Well, if it isn't the Wonder Twins... Wait, is that Frank? Nah. Frank had been sarcastic, but Chloe kinda liked it. Ah, uh, but that was dumb, huh? Damn, had Frank and his dumb mutt made it out of that shipstorm? Chloe's been brief boiled with embarrassed thoughts and feelings. She couldn't believe that Rachel had straight up lied to her about that guy. And come on, him? She could... Max? Chloe? The barista was looking right at them from the sp from her spot behind the counter with some impatience. Max still, Max still a bit shaken, twitched a little as if to get up, but Chloe gestured her to stay seated. Nah, I got it. Chloe got up from her seat, noting the barista was still gawking around with confusion. Signal barista, I guess. Uh, Chloe pointed up and index finger to the barista. The barista just gapped at her for a second with this thing I look. Uh, Chloe would be there in two shakes. What was this chick's rush? Chloe, but Chloe glanced back to see a still stunned Max in her chair. She paused, noticing that Max had unzipped the leather jacket she was wearing. Blood stains were lit littered over Max's shirt. They uh, didn't need that sort of attention. Oh man. Yo. Besides stepping around the table, Chloe tipped her chin up and pinched her fingers near her chest. As if such a vague on the DL motion would make any sense. Chloe's eyes squinted as she tried to figure out what she was even trying to whisper in the first place. Max was dull eyed and slack jawed, still shaken up. Ugh. We should zip it up. <laughs> Let's try pig lion. <laughs> Maybe she'll understand. Ipse el akketque. <laughs> She didn't get it. Uh, uh, Aket J is what I mean. What are you? Uh, never mind, just here. With a half Chloe grabbed the edges of Max's jacket and zipped it up. There you go. Um, with that taken care of, Chloe finally approached the counter. On her way there, she finally took a note of the music playing through the sound system. Jazz. It was, like, really freaking familiar. Chloe knew it from somewhere. Something about the song was leaving a weird pit in her stomach. For some reason, hearing this song had gotten her dwelling on the night before in the first place. But that was in the past, and really the past should stay where it was, right? Shaking the uneasiness off, Chloe reached their tray of brunch. Two tall cups of some fancy sounding shit Max had picked out with. One with soy, the other with hella raspberry creamer. And a big old egg sandwich for Max and some turkey cup deal for Chloe with a bag of donuts. Chloe gawked at the two names written on the cup, still kind of bedazzled at the reality laid before her. They weren't just back in action now. It wasn't crime busting shenanigans. This was fucking living, you know, not like extravagant living, but yeah. It pinched at Chloe's chest for a moment. This was what she had been wanting with Rachel for a long time. This, just this, just being together on the road. Eating out together, traveling together, plotting a course for a ship built for two, the SS. Uh, yeah, still needed the name. Anyway, it was just... wasn't going at all... at all like we had anticipated. 
Chloe felt like a dipshit when she realized she'd been just standing there gawking at the much needed meal. The barista, who'd gone off to ring someone else up, returned with a slightly wary expression. Trying to glass zoned out, Chloe began probing the contents, checking the inside of the bag and their tray. Two drinks, two sandwiches, two donuts. Something seemed missing. Did we miss anything? The barista timidly wondered. Um. Let's check the receipt, I guess that's the most logical thing to do. <clears throat> a bit flustered, Chloe pulled out a crinkled receipt from her back pocket. <laughs> that's how I always do my receipts. Two drinks, two sandwiches, four donuts. Uh huh. The bag only had two donuts. So Chloe wasn't crazy. Can I see the receipt? Chloe fished out the crinkled up receipt and handed it over. Oh, duh, doy. When they placed their order, Max had been so far out of orbit she, she hadn't picked her donut flavor. <laughs> Chloe reminisced about times back in middle school when she and Max would visit the local bakery built into the grocery store down the street. They made some good stuff there, and for cheap. She and Max would take turns picking out a flavor of donut and would get and would get two of each, making each other try the other's choice. Not this time apparently, Max was still out of it. So Chloe would have to step up to donut choosing duty for the both of them. Poor girl had made enough tough decisions for a while, huh? <laughs> Already. Huh. Ugh. Chloe couldn't even crack a dumb joke in her own head without feeling like an asshole. But anyway, Chloe had picked up apple fritters for her own half. Could never go wrong. Yep, apple fritters are nice. <coughs> oh, uh, sorry, I'll get those. What did you want? Uh, uh, does it even matter? I like strawberry, and I feel like eating strawberry. Filling the strawberry ones with the frosting and with the sprinkles. The barista snatched them up with those weird waxy tissue sheets. Thought they used tongs or something, I don't know. Just the sound of the paper crinkling was making Chloe hungry for sugar. Chloe grinned like a schoolgirl at a candy store as she watched the donuts get plucked into her bag. There you go. Nice. Awesome. Thanks. Uh-huh. <laughs> Why did they both look so sleepy? When Chloe reached the table, she realized she hadn't come up with any come up with the usual witty quip or remark to mark her entrance. She just smiled with a stupid smile that immediately dissolved at Max's downtrodden glance. Uh Hey. Chloe set the tray down hastily, eager to undo what she perceived as sending Max's mood a centimeter further in the wrong direction. Hmm. The girls needed some goddamn food. They both did. They hadn't eaten since the night before. Spending the night sleeping in a truck on the side of the road also hadn't done wonders for the stamina stats. Yeah, that kinda sucks. Uh, food stuff for your face stuff smacks. Oh my. <laughs> so cringe worthy. She actually said that. When Max's eyes lit up a bit at the sight of her meal, it brought a reprieve to Chloe's doubts. Yeah, uh, anybody. Food can make any problem go away. After immediately scarfing down a big bite of her breakfast sandwiches between bites. Thanks. She was really going town she was really going to town there. Chloe caught herself staring when her stomach growled uncomfortably. Stepping back to her senses, she shouted down herself. The two ate in peace for a couple minutes, occasionally swapping glances. Cherish each other. <sighs> Is that a blush? Max was really devouring her sandwich, but had to touch her coffee while Chloe danced between the two. I'd rather eat all my food first before I go for my drink instead of actually like eating in between them. That doesn't I heard it's actually not good for your stomach digestion. The fuller Chloe's stomachs became, the more queasy she got. It was the silence between of them. It was the silence between them. Yeah. The silence was starting to feel weird. <laughs> There's been way more than enough silence during their morning travels. Max's house was still a little ways off, but they'd be there by sundown. Okay, so they're heading actually to Max's house in Seattle. I'm not sure how far that is from Oregon. Uh, in either case, silence. It was unsettling. Chloe desperately brainstormed a... Uh, damn it. A uh, search for a topic of discussion. Uh, can talk about people. This cafe logo. <laughs> Maybe it looks like Starbucks, I don't know. Let's talk about the barista, I guess. So the barista chick. Giving us the stink eye and crap. 
What's the thing her deal is? <laughs> She's sort of cute though, right? <laughs> she just shrugs. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Looks onto everything. <laughs> Max is just like, whatever. Well, maybe Max was too busy eating to have much to say. But that meant the poor girl was taking care of herself at least. So, anyway, was your sandwich good? How's the coffee? Oh, small talk, I hate small talk. Max nodded complacently. She swallowed the gulp of coffee she'd been on, sighed with some leaf, and wiped her lip with the sleeve of Chloe's jacket, which was still, which she was still wearing. Well, drink up, sister. Got a few more hours to go. Mm, man, how are you even sleep in a truck? Chloe lightly drummed her knuckle against the table to the jazzy bit of the music playing through the cafe speakers. Don't they have like bread and bed and breakfast or like hostels at least to sleep in? I wouldn't sleep in my truck all day long. Probably stink as well. <laughs> at least if they stay in the hostel they get showers and stuff. Max took another sip, scratched her nose then sighed. Uh Chloe? Yep. We're going to my house, right? Oh, was that not the plan? Max, Chloe took pause at Max's question. They already discussed this the day prior. They were going to Caulfield's. Max's parents didn't know that yet, but Max did. It had been Max's idea. After taking a moment to recover from her stun, Chloe nodded simply. That's the plan anyway. Right. Chloe rubbed her hands on her elbows a little. She was actually starting to get a bit cold without her jacket. <laughs> Max, Max wasn't looking too great either. Uh, Max... It's kind of the worst situation, Chloe. Just let her have it. What's, um... Uh, let her... We can hold hands. Make her feel better. Chloe paused, then extended her arm upright across the table, giving Max a sympathetic, worried look. Max didn't seem to notice the gesture. <laughs> or... Hmm, maybe she wasn't taking what Chloe was giving? Hey. Yeah. What's up with you, bud? Nothing, Chloe. I, uh... Hmm. Max's head jerked in an uncertain way as she swirled her remaining coffee in its cup. Sorry, the whole reality jumping thing, it's kinda... I gotcha. With a soft, with a soft chuckle, Chloe tried to empathize. My mind would, uh, my mind would be hella fucked up too if, uh... <laughs> oh, she's trying so hard. <laughs> Fucking darn it, Chloe. I mean, like, if I was... No, Pella, no, shut the fuck up now, please, thanks, okay, bye. Oh, this is so awkward. Chloe's stomach folded over on itself. Her still digesting food caused discomfort. Max's expression turned a bit sour. I like how this is playing, though, because it's, like, kind of realistic. I get, like, in maybe such a bad incident happen, and... you get, Like, I'm the kind of person who doesn't like silence, so I like, could keep talking... But sometimes I would say like bad things, so sometimes I wonder if I should just be quiet instead of keep talking. So like, oh, it's the awkward situation. It's so relatable. <sighs> yeah, Chloe knew that Max knew what she meant, but like she only bombed right there. She she had come out wrong. Time to unleash her desperation move. What's the desperation move? <laughs> oh man, suave. Smile. I mean, I think if we crack a joke, we probably say something stupid as well. So maybe we should play it suave. I think that's what Chloe would do. Um, <laughs> she just smiles. Like Max is like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm a screw up, <laughs> but I'm a good looking screw up with a sense of humor. Uh, so when I train myself, at least you know I'll look. It'll look good, and you're gonna laugh. Right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Max scoffed for a moment, but then her expression could into an endeared little smile that Chloe knew well. <laughs> that worked. It was the first time she'd seen Max smile like that all day. Chloe, she said simply, brushing a fingertip down against her cheekbone, like dusting off her cheek. Is she blushing? Or she's like nervous or something? I don't know. Chloe had noticed over the past week that Max seemed to do this gesture a lot during the conversation. Uh, Chloe's guess was it was some awkward, adorable tick when Max was nervous or didn't know what to say. After Chloe sighed through her nose in spite of her staring, she realized that Max had not followed up with any kind of verbal reply. 
The ever so brief pause of relief with a weak smile on her face was... No, it was not good enough. Fuck that, Max had been true. Well, Chloe didn't know what to say exactly or how much or how far, but sure seemed like a lot. <clears throat> Max just kept staring. Chloe's stomach felt light, even though it was full. I know like Max just doesn't really need to talk, and knowing she, like, she's such an introvert, maybe all Chloe needs to do is just get, hug her, just hug her all day long. That'll make me feel better. Well, not all day long, just like for an hour, I guess. I don't know if the smile stupidly thing works. I don't know why we stick your tongue out. I'm trying to lighten the gesture, so let's just try to act silly, I guess. Claire was a loss for words, and Max super freaking adorable little smile. She just didn't know how to react. So Chloe did what was natural. She stuck her tongue out and crossed her eyes. <laughs> Max sneakered lightly, softly, warmly. The moment was almost as syruply sweet as Chloe's drink. But it passed too, it passed too soon. Chloe guzzled a gob of her sugary caffeine-infused drink, hoping she'd recover from her social flop. So much sugar and artificial shit, she could feel her bloodstream getting second-hand effects on the way down her throat. Max brushed, Max brushed sandwich crumbs off her pants as she stood up. Even though there were napkins right there, like literally right there, Chloe's chest swelled with a bit of pride. Plus five lazy points. Max got up, scooting her chair out and leaving it out. Another five lazy points. Nice. How high could the score stack today? Max's eyes scanned for a restroom. BRB. Bathroom break. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't even think about it. Chloe tossed out an alternate but appropriate solution to the acronym off the top of her head. Okay, yep. Very, very smart, guys. She grabbed a slight smirk from Max and was a centimeter further satisfied. A centimeter? What? As Max brushed by, Chloe went to reach out her hand, you know, give Max an encouraging hand squeezer. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with the shitting, but you got this. Girl, believe in yourself. Uh, yeah, not so much. She started to get her though, to so the safe face. Just wave like an idiot. Max curiously waved back. <laughs> Chloe ever so briefly considered keeping her company, but uh, she'd been over that sort of shit years ago. Cheeks to piss. Cheeks took pieces together or pretended to piss so they could gossip, set it up in private. I never get that at all. I just. It makes me feel so stupid. I think I've talked about this before. Like how, like in high school, one of my classmates asked me if I want to go to the bathroom. It's actually an opening to socialize with them. And I'm like. Um, I don't need to pee, so and then you just go by yourself, and that was such a mistake. Again, I remember the way they look at me, I was so confused, like, why did they give me the look? They did, I didn't get it. I didn't know how girls worked. Yeah. Chloe had no use for that garbage. She was pretty sure Max didn't either. If you wanted to talk with someone, you did to face to face, and not while expelling crap out of your ass, and who cared if other people heard what they had to say anyway. Chloe scratched her nails at her itchy scalp beneath her beanie, glancing across the coffee shop. Mm, do you even wash your beanie, Chloe? Eh, uh, not much to see in the way of bird watching here. A couple of solid sixes in her book, maybe, but nothing worth committing to memory folly. Later use much less. Oh my god, just staring at chicks. Hmm, oh my god, is that her mom? Oh, Max's phone. Max's phone had gone off. It was still sitting on the table. Well, hey, if Max hadn't taken her phone, she probably wasn't going to be in the bathroom for long, right? Chloe waited for the phone to buzz a second time, but it didn't. Thank fuck, she wouldn't have known what to do. What if it Max, what if, what if it'd been Mrs. Caulfield or something like that? Alright, Chloe had offered to call him soon anyway. Okay. Without too delayed to be a phone call, definitely a text. Chloe was tempted to read it. She could just... Set the phone over. Probably glean a bit from the lock screen. Hey, it could be important or something. Oh boy, I'm gonna maybe save it here. Okay, hmm, I really want to peek. I can check my phone. I want to know who else is alive, so I really want to know. So, like, I mean, maybe Max comes back and sees her. Let's just go for the peek. Chloe couldn't help it. Uh, she just flipped the phone over, look at the notifications, just in case, you know. Ooh, oh my god, Victoria. She's alive, I guess. I'll link you the article. It's look it's looking l Haven't heard from him yet. I'm were. Oh dad. Max, call us when you get this, we need to know. 
two chicks' names that were familiar. Uh, seemed like they were text, um, texting Max about all the hell let's lose recently. Max and Max's pops Ryan, right? Um, he seemed all worried and stuff. Blah, they really need to call their folks soon, huh? They should really, oh my god. I'll be like dying inside if like something happened to like one of my family members in the, the, their location and I don't hear a call from them for a whole day. That's, oh my god. That would that would really kill me. I couldn't. I wouldn't sleep and I'm, I'm stuff. Chloe sure just flinched when she heard someone walk by, and she set the phone down quickly. Ooh, nope, not Max. Way too tall. Oh, damn it. With a slight sigh, with a sigh, Chloe slid the phone back where it had been. Chloe's attention perked like an excited puppy at the first sign of Max exiting the bathroom, but then Chloe noticed that Max had a clump of toilet paper wedged into her right nostril. Oh, more blood. Chloe watched as Max dabbed at her nose a bit as she approached the nearest trash bin and chucked the bloody napkin in. A dark dubious dilemma entered Chloe's thoughts in two seconds, waiting for Max to sit back down. What if, what if it was all made up? No, seriously, what if Max wasn't a time traveler at all? What if something had fucked her brain? You know, like, medically? Yeah, I guess like Max is the only ever person to actually know whether she messed with time or not. <laughs> I can understand that doubt. Hmm. If it had been five fucking years since they hung out or even interacted for all Chloe knew Max could have been in uh Hmm. Something could have happened. Something could have messed up Max's brain. Oh man, that's dark. Hmm. Max cautiously took her seat, scooting back <laughs> minus five points and avoided Chloe staring. Uh what if the whole time travel bit was a bit maybe seeing Chloe for the first time in a so long, having a gun pointed at her like could have like triggered some crazy ass trauma moment. The time travel thing was just how fucked up her head perceived shit. If Max's brain was fucking bleeding, she could have some major issues. I guess to be safe, she should get her brain checked. Chloe, you moron! Don't go thinking crap like that. Max is fine. She's safe alive. She, she has the powers of a god. Well, the thing is, like, if it if it's all fake, then the tornado thing. Well, how do you explain that? How you doing? I'm okay. She wouldn't lie, but uh, if she thought it was real, it wouldn't be lying, would it? Seriously, you can be chill. Max has done gain a layer of awkwardness. Max sniffed, rubbing her fingertip against her dry nose, like it somehow proved she was okay. Hmm, I think we should get medical attention just in case. You know, we don't know, maybe she'll be dying. Uh, you like, sure you don't want to hit a doctor? Yeah, I'm sure. I don't think doctors are trained in dealing with whatever's wrong with me. But should at least get a checkup. Max can totally rewind time, you dipshit. You tortured her for like three days, making her proof she could in how many different ways? She's a goddamn child of Adam, for sure. Max took in a deep breath, rubbing her fingertips against her forehead with a pained look. It's got, it gets better though, right? Usually. Max had uttered the word dubiously. So dubiously it made Chloe uncomfortable. Max took a few seconds, regaining her bearings. It looked... it looked what? I don't know. Chloe paused these seconds, scarfing down more of her donut, desperately craving some kind of sugary relief. Her head went in stupid fucking directions of... Worrying. Worrying about making those family calls. Worrying about finding out about all... Worrying about finding out about all of the people who were fucking dead now because of a freaking tornado that somehow no one saw coming. Worrying about how Rachel needed a funeral. Oh, how a freaking lot of people were gonna need funerals. Oh man. Worrying about how Max Coffee was going to deal with the weight of this stuff. Worrying about how she was gonna deal with it while helping poor Max at the same time. Chloe stepped out of her stupor long enough to notice that Max had stopped. Max was just sitting there, eyes glazed over, face pale, looking at her phone. Max? Claire was mumbling, hoping the sinking feeling in her chest wasn't as obvious on the outside as it was on the inside. Hmm. I mean, like, I guess the good news is seeing her dad, maybe Victoria. That, uh, I mean, eating makes her feel better, I guess. Uh, donuts, eat one. Dot dot dot, for reals, barely eaten for like days, right? That twiggy ass of yours needs food, girl. So come on, eat up. Everything, Chloe. Max was staring out of her trance-like state, but like, she wasn't doing too well. 
everything fucking dies. <sighs> well, yeah, Max thought it seems like the cost of living, I guess. Yep, everything dies. What? Everything I touch <laughs> dies. Wait, what, what did you touch now? Did you touch a butterfly and it died? Max moaned under her breath, shoving her palm against her forehead. Oh, man. She pressed her hands against the skull, trying to, tr like trying to flatten pizza of despair. Or the bunny? What but? Oh, wait, wait, kids, bunny. Her eyes went wide as her hand pushed across her head. Max then gaped at Chloe with realization. <gasps> oh no, the bunny probably died. It took Chloe a few seconds <laughs> of recollection to figure it out. When Kate had uh, taken a dive, damn it. Max had taken it upon herself to adopt the girl's poor pet rabbit. Oh no, she's thinking, oh no, she's crying. Things that are escalated a bit with the whole serial killer kidnappings, time travel, turning the. Oh my god! I mean, like, Kate's bunny was like day three, so like, did Max forget to do anything with the bunny for like. I don't know, give it. So she traveled back in time, uh, end of episode three. How much time did she waste? I mean, she, she went back to her dorm, I think, eventually. So she should have fed the rabbit, but then like on day 4 and day 5, and then now day 6, if the bunny's still alive, probably be dead by now because it's like 3 days of not having any food. Things, uh, yep. <clears throat> oh no, Max had just another thing to beat herself up over, as if there weren't, there wasn't enough thrown off the table already. The girl was finding odds and ends, forgotten as scraps and throwing them off to, oh man. Chloe tried to think of what to say. I can't say not your rabbit, that's gonna mean. I mean, both. Uh. Uh. Let's <coughs> say more important things. Max, you were trying to save people from a fucking cycle. It's. Yeah. Didn't even think to take her bunny with me. Just. Ah, just... oh, the bunny would have died anyway. Jefferson would have done something horrible. We're losing her dog. Jefferson, yep. There was a goddamn serial rapist kidnapping girls, and you, we brought him down. We think that more, I think that make, I think that more than makes up for a lost rabbit. Uh, if I'd been there for Kate in the first place, oh no, don't please, you can't control everything, you're not God. This is the point of it, it's like, using your powers was a mistake, right? I mean, I guess, I mean, that's why you, you choose like, sacrifice Chloe ending. It kind of boils down to like, you shouldn't have even used your powers in the first place, so like... I mean, the memories are still there. I guess it's not like pointless, so... But the thing is like, in real life, when you don't have any time traveling powers, you have to accept what happens. Your parents die, your best friend dies, you have to accept it. I mean, there's nothing you can do, you just have to move on and just be strong. I mean, that's, that's what life is all about. Dying is part of life, you just have... and you can't control it. Whether you're like young or old, you die. That's just the reality of it. It's how you live your life. If I'd been there for Kate in the first place, before I'd even gotten powers, her and her bunny would still be here. But I wasn't, so they're not. And Max slowed down for a second. You're hell freaking a plant, Chloe. Okay, I stopped talking about the plant. But this is a plant. Plants die all the time. Yeah, you. Okay. I could even save my fucking plant. Your plant? Max was sleeping, her voice had dipped into an angry whisper. Oh man, we are losing her. She's depressed as fucked. Chloe had to lean over the table just to hear her. I killed her, Chloe. I fucking killed a goddamn plant. Oh man, oh boy, she was flatlining. Max dug her fingernails into her scalp, showing her swerved bangs stick against her head. Go hug her, Chloe. Tell her at least you saved your best friend's life. <laughs> Chloe felt her heart freeze and the panic flickering in Max's eyes. Chloe just gaped, gaped, dumbstruck. Max usually like kept to herself when she was freaking. Kept a chill head. All this shit happening lately really had thrown the chick for a loop, huh? And Chloe had no clue what to do about it. She promised to be there, but just being there was clearly not enough here. Or. Or maybe she wasn't being in the right there? Max's quivering hands had finished drying her eyes again. She flipped her cell phone up and nudged it past her barely, eating donut. 
Chloe was afraid to see what it was, but Maxine needed someone to join her in whatever dark pit she was stuck, stuck in, so... On Max's phone was a news article about the chain though. The screen was scrolled into a section listing names of known casualties. Oh no, please don't look at that. Oh. Gotta move on. Mm. Chloe actually recognized a few shit. And there was one name that Chloe figured had Max set off. Warren Graham. Oh, Warren died. Oh, well, uh, wouldn't even be here if he hadn't. Max was still muttering hysterics. Man, I think Warren wants the reason Max could go back in time and save Chloe. I mean, Warren kind of like more or less helped save the day. Let him die? Cause why wouldn't I just? Chloe couldn't bring herself to read more of the article. She'd deal with that shit later. Max shouldn't have been dealing with it right then. Too bad Chloe didn't have rewind powers. I mean, once done is done, you have Chloe, you have your family, just focus on the present, man. The past is in the past, there's no point regretting. She'll go back and take Max's phone from her or mm, save her from fucking footballs and swimming pools, but then it actually mattered. Chloe sighed, rubbing, her, rubbing sweat from her forehead with one hand as she slid Max's phone back with the other. The girl was in full on Mad Max mode now, with an extra capital M on the first word. God fucking damn it, Chloe. How's about you start thinking up dumb mess remarks and do something? After a few seconds of gawking at Max's weeping, Chloe simply uttered a disconcerted syllable. Whoa. That like. Really sucks. Eh, yeah, Chloe. Way to comfort her. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, I did this. Max's voice was cracking. The self-defeat was fucking real. Max. She wasn't going to take any more of seeing Max beat herself up. Just gotta move on. Dude, you gotta let all of this shit go. Stuff happened. Before you got your powers, that's life. Doing on all the crap that ain't gonna do you any good. The least I owe them is to... You don't owe anyone anything. Of course you don't get it. I'm trying to. Maybe if I wasn't such a scrub, it'd be easier. Don't start this back up. Talk shit about yourself again. I will hit you. I swear to zombie Jesus. Max, you're not God. Even if you don't have your powers, you think the same thing. Max choked on a surprised laugh at the bluntness of Chloe's remark. Chloe glared at, Ma Chloe glared at Max with mock tread, leveling up a slap ready hand. Oh man. Say what again? Uh, uh, Max act out. It was weird, like half sob, half laugh thing, but also kind of a sigh, maybe? At least Chloe's stupid sense of humor had its uses. Here, eat. Uh, Chloe said it's sharper than she'd mean to actually. But she had some right to be telling a time warrior what to do. You kinda do. You have to snap her back out of it, man. Like the doctor's companions were allowed to call the shots. Okay, maybe. Well, maybe they were allowed when the doctor was in a bad place like this. Chloe yanked out two glazed donuts with strawberry frosting and sprinkles, giving one to Max. Chloe shot down on hers, hoping more sugar would give her back a couple hit points or something. HP. Max was being weird though. Dude, Max, what's wrong now? Is it your donut? They, like, cook it. Wrong? Or, I don't know, did they sprinkle it backwards? <laughs> Back or oh, don't talk about rewind. What's wrong with it? Mm, no, nothing. I just <sighs> just reminds me of Warren. Oh man, he get us these kinds of donuts after school sometimes. So what? I should have picked the chocolate donut. Choices, man. They matter. Oh, so sorry. I I didn't know. It's not your fault. Max took a bite of her donut, almost defiantly, as if to spite her own guilt. Add a girl. Mrs. face wrinkled as she scrambled to grab a napkin. She managed to grab one at, in time and sneezed into it fairly loudly. Uh. My slightly relaxed body had tightened right back up. She glanced at a napkin she'd just blown into, clutching at what looks like a headache. Chloe didn't need to see it to know what happened because there was still some red streak across Max's upper lip. Fuck. After gaping at her own blood for a couple seconds, Max sniffed some more. She carefully took in a deep breath, swallowed, 
She set her slightly bloody napkin on her empty paper plate. Max. She was starting to think a visit to the hospital was going was going to need to be a thing soon. Yeah, definitely. Max didn't need to pay any. Max didn't need. Max didn't pay any heed to Chloe. Shaking fumbly for a new napkin, she dabbed at her nose gently. She licked her thumb, using her dampened digit to clean blood from her lip. She dried her finger and face with the napkin. It looked like she wasn't actually bleeding. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, another bullet dodged. It's okay. Max gave hasty, subtle nod. She glanced at Chloe. Fucking finally, she repeated herself. It's okay. Chloe was a bit slack, jawed at Max's weird. Uh, right. Chloe sipped, a, Chloe sipped a quick sip of raspberry infused coffee. You ready to blow this hot sickle joint? <laughs> That's not funny. Oh man, Chloe. <laughs> blow this joint, hot dog stand, popsicle stand, whatever. Make like a tree and get the hell on the road. Damn, Chloe had just made herself want to smoke a joint big time. She remembered her, she probably still had a bit of that emergency stash hiding in the glove compartment. Uh, but she had to quit the relying on that crap but she was gonna have Max. Yep, true. Still a back, still a backup was good to have around. At this rate, she probably need it as soon as they touched down at Caulfield's. Uh, was Max still on planet Earth by the way? So, Max smiled nervously, trying to recover herself. E yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're a dork. And you... <laughs> don't know how to flirt. <laughs> and you are a dog who doesn't know how to flirt. <laughs> oh, and you do, huh? Uh... <laughs> I am, uh, like the, the master. Oh. What? You're not gonna show me her bashful Chloe? That's weird. No. Stick with me, kid. I'll teach you the ways. Uh-huh. Well, daylight's burning and crap. Let's see the road, eh? Uh, sure. Chloe got up from her chair. She gave her coffee cup a swirl. Too much to let go to waste, but also too much to wolf down in one go. She just take it as much as, as much work as it was. She still had the pair of donuts to take for the road. Yep, I'll save my coffee. They were apple fritters too, so they wouldn't get frosty or cream or shit anywhere. Chloe checked the crinkle, crinkly little bag they had. Two apple fritters, still snug as a bug, in a paper rug. Come on, girl. We got a rubber to burn. Trails to blaze, baby. She made to, she made to head for the door, leaving all the trash behind. She lingered, her handprint making territory on the glass door. Max had gotten up, but seemed to hesitate at the sight of their garbage. To Chloe, to Chloe, it's not really, but kind of dismay. Max tidied up the garbage onto a plastic tray. <laughs> I have minus five lazy points. She carried it to the garbage can to Chloe's side and dumped it out. Minus five lazy points again. Back to square one. Uh, zero. Back to zero points. With coffee and donuts pinched together in one hand, the other dirtying the entrance door, Chloe pushed the way open for the exit.